I always want to pull over and just pick up all this fucking litter. What kind of a fucking asshole does that? The kind of person that rides a bicycle out on the street. That's who does it. I already have like a huge temper and I'm trying to learn how to control it and driving on these streets out here like makes me lose my shit again, you know? People always say when you anger is, is when you have expectations of other people. But what can I say? I'm a dreamer. All right, we're in Hollywood right now. Nobody knows how to fucking drive out here. Motorcycle, I always look out for these guys. But I do not care about people on bicycles in LA. It's not a tragedy if you die out here. They're such fucking cunts. They ride right out in the street, right? And they're always telling you, share the road, and they won't get the fuck over. Get over! You see me behind you? I'm in a fucking car. Get the fuck over. They're always giving you the finger and shit, acting like they're these fucking angels, right? They never stop at stop signs. They don't obey the rules of the road. That's what the fuck they're supposed to do. And then they fucking ride right out in the middle of the road like, like you pulled up into their own bike race with their stupid fucking tight outfits on like they're doing some sort of time trial that anybody gives a fuck about. I hate when they frost the bicycle too, like it was a fucking tragedy. It was inevitable. You're on a motorcycle without a fucking engine, driving out in traffic where people are texting. Gee, what could go wrong? So just fucking sneak over. I'll go over the double line a little bit. I'll get around you. You won't get hit. Nobody has to frost the fucking bicycle. Okay, look at this. See this? This person coming up on the scooter. Look what I do. Look what I do. I get over. Go ahead. Go. Live your dream. Go find love. <laughs> look at this fucking cunt. Get out of the fucking road. Look at this, look at this. She's pretty though, right? You can't get mad. But you know what's funny? If I hit her, it's my fault. You're on a fucking scooter crossing four lanes of fucking traffic. Who raised her, right? Aren't you supposed to have a helmet on? So if you're on a bicycle, just fucking edge over. I don't want to hit you, all right? But the longer you stay out there, it starts to feel like a good option. I always lose my shit when I'm driving. Most of it's because I have a temper. The other part is I don't leave enough time. And then like the other, like, I don't know, 40% of it is that people suck at driving. I mean, I don't think I'm the greatest driver, but you know what? I am considerate. People walking in the crosswalk. Hustle. Oh, they got, they, they, you always get, you, you know, a woman goes by and she's got the heels on. You know, what are you supposed to do? Can't run on their tippy toes like Walter Payton did. Although Walter Payton ran on his tiptoes his whole fucking career, he never got a knee injury. Look at that guy. Tell me that guy didn't know where Whitey Bulger was all these years. Watch this guy. Watch this fucking asshole. The one pedestrian out here right when I want to make a left. Look at this fucking guy on his phone, walking as slow as you can, slow as you can. I always jog in the crosswalk, right? I get across. I do the wave. Now, what's that guy? He's got the rainbow boots. Oh, yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, I thought those were pants. He actually has a tan. His pants, his legs are the same color. Is he supposed to be the Reno 911 guy? Who's having more fun than this guy? You know, I think if every cop dressed that way, and like there would be no more fucking violence. You know what I mean? The guy just come up. Sorry. Okay, you're going a little fast. Be like, all right. How you doing, sweetie pie? <laughs> you see him just give the thumbs up to the fire department. I fucking love that guy. Driving into the teeth of it. Hands at ten and two. Checking my mirrors, making sure everybody's where they need to be. Oh, it's a one-way fucko! <laughs> I've done that. Oh, it's somebody's mom. God bless you. God bless your mom. You know what? She fucked up. She realized it. She backed up and then she waved. This is classic. Look at this guy here. He's going to have his ass in, in my fucking lane. Then you beep at him and they don't understand why. Probably because they can't hear the thoughts in my head. <laughs> now watch this. Now I go to take a left. I make sure I get my whole fucking vehicle in the left lane so some other asshole can pull up here. So, okay, here I am, going to make a left, right? I'm getting the fuck out there. I want that guy in the blue car to make it. Watch, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this, right? So now at least the other guy, he's gonna make it. I actually do this. I actually look in my rear view mirror to see if he made it, as I don't look where I'm going. There you go, just open the fucking door. Don't look, you cunt, fucking idiot. If I took his door off, that's my fault. 
Everybody should just be banging a fucking right on red up here. Keep it moving. Something. Somebody do fucking something. You know what it is? There's no teamwork out here. Everybody's like just out here for themselves. You're on a bicycle. I get it. That's one less car on the road. Good for you. I'm behind you. Get the fuck over. You're the first guy to make a left. Get out there so the other two people behind you can fucking make the light. Will you get out of my fucking lane, you fucking idiot? Texting, of course. Texting. 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 Why do I yell? He can't hear me. As you guys watch me lose my fucking shit here, hopefully I'm going to say something. And it's going to make some of you like, oh, I do that. Maybe I won't do that anymore. And then I won't be such a psycho. Is that what I'm trying? I don't even know what I'm trying to do here. So where I want to be is about a block and a half away. And this is going to take me every bit of like 17 minutes to get there. I mean, we've literally been sitting here for like 20 fucking lights. Somebody should be overturned and on fire up here for the level of fucking traffic that's going on. Where are all of these fucking people going? Like one of the advantages of being a stand-up comedian is that everybody's at work during the day and I should be able to just cruise around throwing fucking rose petals out the goddamn window and how wide open it is. It just never happens. I work from home. I, I started a business. It's fucking insane. Goddamn baby could crawl on the fucking sidewalk and get there faster. This really is stupid. All right, I gotta make a left here. Who's gonna let me in? Who's gonna, how about you? You gonna let me in? You gonna let me in? Of course not. Why would you let me in? You could go another two feet. Let me in. Thank you. Thank you, maybe? I still do the wave, even though you didn't fucking let me in. This is why I never want to leave my house. I love my wife, but she always does that shit. Like, we should do something today. Today would be a good day to do something. You want to do something today? And it's just like, yeah, I would love to if it wouldn't take four fucking hours to get to the something, and by the time I get there, I want to kill myself. I can't imagine living in like Nebraska and they just, hey, you want to do something today? And you just get in your car and you drive and you go fucking do it. Half the homeless people out here just got sick of driving. That's what it is. Just pulled over and just said to hell with it. I, I can't fucking do this. I, can't, I just can't do it. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to find some other fucking way. Where's, where, how do I back this up? How do I back it up? Oh, there it is. People hate me right now. People hate me. I like this person. I like how this person's driving. Before it even turns green, they're already pulling up. They're ready to go. I judge their parents on how they react to the light. You should be like Big Daddy Don Garlitz. As soon as that tree turns green, man, you stand on it, son. Go, you motherfucker. Go. Go. Not yet. Oh, that would have been disastrous. Don't listen to me. But he has on a sweater and a nice hat. Now that's a love story. When you can walk a woman underneath an overpass and she's still captivated by your every word, that's a love story. That actually warms my heart. Chances are... Go, go, go! There you go. Good move, good move. Good move. All right, now we're on the, uh, we're on the highway. Every place else in the world, the further left you are on the highway, the faster you're supposed to be going. You're not supposed to pass on the right, but every cunt out here, that's exactly what they do. So when you're trying to get off, you gotta go like fucking 90 miles an hour. Come on, let me in. Let me in. This person, are you gonna let me in, you douche? You see my fucking turn signal? Thank you. Even when they're a douche, you still wave. Stops them from taking the gun out of their fucking glove box. Now look at this fucking asshole. Giant green bus all the way over on the left. What are you doing? except slowing people down. Look at this, it's like the Manson family bus. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, he's trying to get over. See, that was my fault. <laughs> and I passed on the right. I'm so full of shit. Ah, oh, that was bad. And the guy was black, so maybe he thought I was yelling something racist. I mean, the whole thing, and during, and I'm wearing like the fucking, like, I feel like this is a classic racist white guy sweater. You know what I mean? You just look like you're ready to take a family photo, and then you say, like, the most horrible thing ever. Hi, welcome to the neighborhood. I'll tell you, they gotta build that wall. They gotta build that fucking wall, man! 
What do I do? Do I get in front of the van? You get in front of the van, man. You get in front of the van. And watch this. I cut in front of this fucking guy, but I do the wave. Thank you. Thank you. Look at this lady fucking texting. Looking right down. I thought she's, she's either trimming her fucking pubes or she's texting. And I'm watching her text. So I'm part of the problem. And I would say something, but in today's climate, I would probably get busted for some sort of harassment. Now, here's the thing, too. When you're in this traffic, follow you know, safely behind, but don't be that douche that leaves like 20 fucking car lengths like you're trying to prove some philosophical point, you know, like, hey man, like, if like 10 people get in front of me, I mean, I'll only get there nine seconds later, so like, where's the hassle? That's when you wish you had like some sort of fucking thing that you didn't care about on the front of your car, whatever you call those things, those things they had in TJ Hooker and you just slam into them repeatedly. This is where you just start getting claustrophobic, you just want to start fucking slamming into people. Right, can I get over? Can I get over, please? Thank you. Some day was when the traffic is really fucking bad. I fantasize about living on top of that hill right over there where there's no other houses and just having a zip line right to where I go to work. And just right into my fucking office. Of course, I'd have to walk home, right? But getting to work would be awesome. I hate seeing all this litter on the side of the road. They ought to give you the opt-out. Like, what do you want to do? You want to do jury duty, or do you want to pick up litter? You just have to do it on one little fucking this shit. Look how depressing that is. What, are you just throwing all this shit out there? You clean it up. Christ, you clean it up! What kind of a fucking animal just drives down the road and throws this shit out? It's fucking unbelievable. How were you raised? You know what's funny? You're not really throwing your trash out properly, are you? You're just putting it, and they're taking it away to throw it again outside someplace else that we don't have to see it. Right? They throw it out where all the porpoises are, out there in the ocean. That's true. I was actually looking up the history of garbage the other day. There's this whole long article, and I was just like, this is too long for me to read this. I was going to change my behavior, but now I'm not. Look at this. Some rich guy's building a fucking skateboard ramp for his kid. He's going to have that giant truck pull right up and have illegal immigrants under the age of eight lifting all of that off there. And you think that'll be reported? Of course not, but you know what I mean? Matt Lauer comes sashaying in with his junk out of his pants and all of a sudden that's a story? I mean, where's the justice? Having said that, sexual predators need to be eradicated out of our society. <laughs> I just want to roll my window down and talk to these people and just be like, where are you going? Well, where the fuck am I going? I'm not going anywhere. I'm driving around out here to talk about how bad the traffic is, so I guess I'm worse. <laughs> oh, the fucking ribs. Is Ribs USA still out here? That little rib joint? McDonald's with the Spanish tile on top of it. If you're gonna build a McDonald's, you have to make it look like the neighborhood. You will adjust to us before you sell your poison. Thank you very much. It's not right there. Get the fuck out there. That guy did nothing wrong. I had already turned yellow, but you know. Whenever you go to make a left, you wanna to try to make sure three people. There's a person texting while they walk across the street. You should legally be able to drive by, open your door and hit them. I think. Actually got no fight with this guy. He's walking across the crosswalk and the arrow was green and this person didn't go and I was like, what the fuck? And then they finally went and I tried to make the light and by then people were in the, uh, the crosswalk thing. And he was this, this Mexican dude, he's like, yo bro, it says walk. And I was like, the light's green. I could tell he was gonna do something to my truck. And uh, at the last second, before he walked away, he, he slapped my mirror or something like that. And then I said all this Steven Seagal shit at him as he walked away, as if I could beat the shit out of him with my fucked up ribs, messed up shoulder, and my lack of quick twitch muscle fiber. But you know, when you're in your car, you feel safe. <laughs> in and out burger, there's always a line. I think when you get a pedestrian mad enough to slap the mirror off the side of your car, I mean, that's usually a good indication that, uh, you know, you're probably not interacting with your fellow man the way you should be. Firehouse subs, you're like, that's a great name, huh? Just sounds like you're gonna get diarrhea. There's a fire in my ass. Thanks for the subs. Would you like some peppers on that? No, I wouldn't firehouse subs. Look at that beautiful woman coming out of fucking Domino's Pizza. Gorgeous. Look at that dog right there. Not a care in the world. You think he gives a shit about global warming? Doesn't. Somebody could write a great coffee table book about that, about how to get into the mentality of a dog with its head out the window, and there'd be enough fucking morons out there that would buy it and literally start driving down the street like Ace Ventura. 
Hey, like this lady there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. God bless you and your hat. God bless you and your hat. And your hat and your dog. That's not safe. That's not safe. Why have children? Have dogs, right? That's what Bob Barker used to say. Spay and neuter yourselves and have more cats and dogs. Now the hipster guy with his tight jeans, he's never having kids. That's why these millennials are never, you know, they're not having kids the way other generations have. It's not like they're not trying. I mean, everybody's out there banging. It's just when your jeans are that tight, it's just, you know, it's killing an entire generation. Dude, there's like a ramen place every five feet. I don't understand what people are so excited about fucking ramen noodles for. Even if they taste good, you want to sit around another 20 people making that noise? <laughs> fucking Hannibal Lecter fava beans noise the entire time? You got to get ramen noodles to go. That's a to-go item. Or they should make you sit outside on a windy day when you eat it so no one has to listen to you slurping the shit up. No matter how broke I was, I never drove a car like that. At some point, you just got to take out the credit card and get the fucking back bumper fixed. You don't accept it. The second you reattach the license plate, you just accept it. That's like you put on some pounds and rather than eating a salad, you buy the next size up pants, right? You just accepted the fact that you're slowly going to become a fat fuck. You know, these fucking people with their bumpers and their cunt bellies. I've just had it. There it is. Ribs USA. I should probably shut the car off. Global warming and all. I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana, home of uh, the whining ass Indianapolis Colts. Oh, they cheated. They took a cunt hair out of the ball. That's why we lost by 35. Unbelievable. This is what I love about Jim Ursay. That bitching made a stick, and he works right there. Hey, Jimmy! He's probably still up from last night, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna be going over to uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Indy 500. Oh, that's what Indianapolis is home of, the Motor Speedway. Look at this old woman smoking cigarettes. Is that a guy? No, it's a woman. I love the Midwest. They haven't seen a Surgeon General's report in their entire life. They don't give a fuck. Fucking smoking cigarettes with some raw red meat in their front shirt pocket. Look at this cop, he's smiling. I like Indianapolis. This guy's got a shovel. Always oh, filling up the potholes. Man, they got money out here, huh? You never see that in LA. Oh, I see what they're doing. The Indy 500's here, so that's, they're filling up the potholes. They're making it look good. All right, so right now we're on our way to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, home of the Indianapolis 500, which is gonna be going down this uh, Memorial Day weekend. What's amazing about this speedway is when you first see, you cannot fucking believe how big it is. Because you forget that it has to be big enough that people could be driving 200 miles an hour. So we're gonna meet one of the drivers who's gonna take me out on the track. I know who you're thinking. Who's, who's gonna drive you around, Bill? Rick Mears, Gordon Johncock, AJ Foyt. No, none of those old coots. Half of them are probably dead. The one and only Danica Patrick. A lovely lady. Do you realize how legendary this place is? I almost got the chills when I pulled in here. Holy shit, this is awesome. All right, Bill Burr, here I am, Indianapolis Motor Speedway with the legendary Danica Patrick. Gonna take a lap, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I hate being in the passenger seat. I'm definitely gonna get freaked out. Do you get bored, like, after you do a race? You, you don't know. drive yourself home, do you? Like, you know, sudden sure. you're just sitting and stop and go traffic in, like, a Subaru? Have you had, like, one of those Ricky Bobby sort of uh, rivalries with any driver? That even if you came in seventh, as long as they came in eighth, you psyched? Actually, in racing, that uh, tends to be a problem within teammates, usually. You have the most similar equipment as they do. So it's the bigger test of talent on yeah, some Yeah, I saw level. that with Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. There you go. In Formula One, it's very, yeah, very prevalent. Yeah, it's hilarious. Corner. This is it right here. This is so yeah. iconic. I can't believe I'm here right now. <laughs> you know what I already noticed about you? Steely, like, calm. Oh, you're cruising around oh, here, thank you. and you're just like, well, thank you know, you. you just stay here, you stay along the wall. I mean, you're entering the corner at 230, 235 miles an hour without lifting. 
235 miles an hour. It does sound pretty cool, actually, doesn't it? How would you just ride right on somebody's ass like that, just knowing the whole time that all someone has to do is just, just clip you in the back and you're going to go flying into the wall? You just don't think about it, right? Yeah. You're, like, you're so focused, like, I'm going to get around this thoughts bastard. Thoughts become things. Let's not, uh, let's not think about those things. Let's take this time. Is that a saying? Or you just come up with that. That's well, awesome. I'm pretty sure I didn't come up with it, but I'm pretty sure it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a saying, but I'm I like to say I'm going to use that with it. my wife. It's true. Thoughts honey, become honey, things. Honey, thoughts become things. I don't want to go too fast, but I was thinking I'd speed it up a little bit. Yeah, let me get the experience. I went here in 95 and 96. I used to watch this every year when I was growing up, you know, Rick Mears and yeah. Al Unsa, Oh yeah. Uh, Mario Andretti. See, this is cool. Then you come up along the wall. Now, this must feel like you're in, like, still in first gear. Well, I mean, the car rolls around and moves a lot, you know, compared to the other cars. You can so. feel that? Oh, yeah. Around. I thought I was going to be nervous, but you're, like, so, like, calm. How long have you been doing this? Uh, this is my 27th um, season of racing. 27th. And you're retiring, right? I am, I yeah. I think that's awesome. Thank you. I'm so glad finally somebody's, like, excited about me retiring. Like, it's yeah, my you decision. left. You're still in your prime. Like, I don't know how it works with race car drivers. You know, with athletes, like, you know, when you got to run around and stuff, your body breaks down, and then it kind of starts to get sad. You're not as fast. How do you age out of racing? I think that you just don't care enough anymore, and there's so much risk on the line that you start thinking about that part of it. Have you ever been driving like 200 miles an hour right on somebody's ass, someone right behind you, and you just start thinking about like going to the mall or something? And you, Is that when you start thinking, like, I got to get out of racing? <laughs> no. Like, I wonder if they're going to make another Anchorman. And then you're like, wait a minute, I'm, a, I'm an Indy 500 right now. <laughs> I hope they make another Anchorman. I love Anchorman. It's like an all-time favorite of mine. But I have kind of pictured you as like the Veronica Corningstone. Like Veronica all these people Corningstone. will give it. Like, she was like, yeah, qualified. When, when is your last race going to be? Uh, May 27th. Sunday, May 27th. Oh, this is it? Yeah, it's in a few days. Oh, my God. So this is like a legendary uh, trip around the, around the track with you. How many miles around is this? By two the way? and a half. Two, two and a half, half miles. miles around, so it's uh, 200 laps, 500 miles. Do you have any idea what lap you're on after a while? Is no. It just slam you down actually the get very confused. Sometimes there are par parts in the race and you're like, we're only on lap 35, or you're like, holy crap, how is it 40 to go? You know, like there are certain points in the race that go a lot faster than other points. Literally. I can relate to that as a comedian. There's nights you go on stage and you're thinking, I must have done 50 minutes. And you've only been up there for like 11. And, but you've somehow burned through most of your act. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Literally feeling my face getting pulled over here. This is awesome. I literally am going twice as fast in an Indy car than this. Double the speed. Oh, that's, how cool is that? Now, how do you, how do you maintain your calm when you're leading at, at a place like this without thinking like don't blow this well i say to myself um i mean you you just get very singularly focused you're thinking to yourself like you know how does the car feel how do i stay ahead of the balance how do i make sure that i don't you know the front stays hooked up and i don't let it get you know too much understeer too fast and then not be able to turn and then you know what are the other cars doing and you know looking in your mirrors you're listening to your spotter you're hearing if anybody's off strategy. You know, you're kind of I understood. got a lot some going of that. on. Some of that I understood. Well, I think that's going to have to be our checkered flag. That was awesome. <laughs> How fast were we going when you really were going? Because when we were doing 80. 120, 130? Yeah. I think this is it, right I can't believe I just got to do that. That was so cool. cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. All right, there you go. Legendary uh, Indianapolis. Motor Speedway. I want to thank Danica Patrick for not uh, hitting the wall or anything like that. It's my Staying job. Staying steely calm. I thought I was going to be nervous. I wasn't. It was awesome. None of those tourists over there care about me. <laughs> this is Bill Burr, and I'm doing another one of these driving videos, these how-to. How to, how to drive a little more courteous people out there. There's so much screaming and yelling on Facebook. Wouldn't it be nice if it stopped when you got on the road? I'm in, uh, I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana, home of, uh, home of this downtown area. I mean, who's kidding who? The fucking Pacers never won anything, did they? 
They don't have a hockey team. They don't have a baseball Turn team. After oh, would you shut up, you fucking... No, sorry, me too. I understood that was very strong. It was very strong you to interrupt me so rudely. Anyways. Here's a downtown area you which will arrive at your destination on the right. Yeah, you just can't have this fucking thing on. Right, for some reason in downtown Indianapolis, we have enough you lanes have for like a highway. This right fucking thing, side. shut up. I fucking hate that navigation thing. I can't stand it, man. Remember back in the day you just you just you had a map. That was it. I know I sound like an old guy, but you could at least continue to listen to your song. Pour some sugar on me. Back then in the, the late eighties. It always comes on during the best part. You know, you're totally in your fantasy. You're playing the guitar solo in front of everybody who did you wrong. And they were like, wow, we were really wrong about him. And then all of a sudden it's like, make a left. All right, so here we go. This is counting down. I had plenty of time to get through the caution lights. So then, you know, I make that guy be first and I lose the people behind us filming us. It's tremendous. Anyways, look at this guy staring hard at me. Staring hard at me. I hope he doesn't have any fucking issues with cameras. The fuck are you looking at? Good lord. Do they not have cameras out here? They never filmed the fucking episode of the Real Housewives of Indianapolis? You know, with them putting their horseshoes on the bottom of those fucking high heels? Oh, that's, that was me. That was mean. So anyways, if you notice, I just made a nice left turn there. I used my turn signal, and then I sped up a little bit so I, this guy behind me wouldn't get mad. There's nothing wrong with somebody coming into your lane as long as you keep fucking going. It's that shit where you come in and then you step on the brakes like, oh, I don't, not sure how to do this. Very patriotic license plates out here. A lot of people out here in Indiana are very proud to be Americans, if you know what I mean. The Klan is strong in this state, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Once again, there's just no traffic. There's literally no traffic. The second you put these cameras on the car, everybody just takes off. You saw what that, how that guy was staring. You saw how he was staring. By the way, don't do that when you're going up to an intersection. Well, up here on the right is the, uh, the Alexander. It's a big thing to do with uh, buildings and hotels now. You do the Ohio State thing where you put the in front of it, and then everybody's like, oh, shit, this must be special. It really isn't. You know what you can never use when you're in a hotel? You can never use a, uh, a face cloth, ever, unless you're wiping something up. Because like, I'm convinced like, like 40 loads a month are shot into those goddamn things. You know, I guess unless you're jerking off into one. Other than that, I'd keep it away from your face. Yep, I'm just gonna rename these videos. Bill cruises around while everybody stays in their own lane. You know what I'm realizing? I think I've, I've just been a psycho. And all this stuff I think that's happening every five seconds actually maybe happens once a drive. You gotta love a good bus station, you know? There's, sure, there's a lot of degenerates down there, but there's always like a jewel or something living in a locker, getting ready to sing another hit song. Who will save you? Whatever she used to sing. Running another red light, cruising on through. There you go, and the guy behind me made it. Our own film crew. You wanna speed up, you wanna make the light, you wanna get through it. I'm gonna ignore those people in the wheelchairs. Oh, just gliding through the city as if there's no purpose for these videos. Look at me, I got my hand on the wheel like this, I'm leaning, cutting over nine lanes, nobody beeping at me. I'll tell you one thing, these people in Indianapolis, they fucking work, they get to work and that's it. Or they're still sleeping. Is this a speed trap? What's the speed, like 15 miles an hour? Oh, it's so the guy can, he's painting the line. He's got to do it himself. He's got to push it. Ah, oh, that's adorable. Event in progress. Road closed. Shut the fuck up. Whoa. This is hilarious. She just said the road's closed. It's not closed. Look at this asshole working out up there. <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing burpees. What is it with CrossFit people that they can't just work out? They, they got, everybody's got to know you're working out. It's like, I work out. I do it inside. He goes up to the top of the statue like he's in Rocky. Ba -da -da. All right, so that was downtown Indianapolis. Now you're supposed to get up to speed here before you get over. The on-ramp is, is designed to get your speed up. You know what I see people do on the highway? You ever see that person that pulled over to stop and then they're sitting in the breakdown lane and they want to rejoin people driving 70 miles an hour and they put their blinker on and they just pull out? You got to get your speed up. Get up to about 50, 55, and then, then you come over. It's all common sense, right? It all makes sense to me. 
Look at that giant, stupid Lucas Oil Field Stadium. You know these poor people here, they're still paying for, uh, they're still paying for the Hoosier dump. That cheating bastard. I'll tell you one thing, I would never be out here in Indiana. I'd never be a, an Uber driver. I mean, there's literally nobody here. This level of people, it's a, this is like, what, this is what you dream about. Just cruising. All right. This is getting a little weird. It's just people walking down the middle of the street here. We in the backwoods now. Faster than turkey shit through a tin horn. That motherfucking rock, I thought a snake was under it. None of these make sense. You know, living in LA, this, is, this blows my mind. I forgot how just how green it can be, you know? You ever flown across the country from East Coast to the West Coast? It's like watching somebody's life, you know? Starts off all beautiful, and lush, you know? All the water, that's like when you're, you still get your full head of hair, it's all shiny. In the middle of the country, it kind of levels out. That's when you get married, you're having kids, I'm just gonna do this, I'm staying with you. The Rocky Mountains, those are when you get kidney stones. Then you get out to the southwest and it's just all fucking, get that first pain in your side, right? Look at, this is perfect, right near a graveyard. And it all just goes fucking right back down again. Right near the ocean. I, I swear too much, I gotta clean up my act. Golly jeekers, I'm driving like a jerk face. Um, this thing's gonna be talking the whole time. Whatever, we can leave her on, I'll improvise with her. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and I'm talking over the robot lady on the map here, and it's time for another one of my instructional driving videos here on the All Things Comedy Network. For those of you unfamiliar with these videos, I have a tendency to lose my shit, and evidently, according to people who think that they're therapists, they tell me it's because I have expectations of people. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you coming over? Are you coming over? Go, you fucking moron. Nice move, though. That wasn't bad. Everybody's doing everything correctly out here. It's just like perfect Thursday. And I make another light. <laughs> this is fucking real. I feel like I'm, I'm in the presidential caravan right now. A couple of Secret Service guys, you know, hanging on to the side with their fucking running board and the handle. It's just like perfect Thursday. And I make another light. I don't know what this street is, but this is my mo this is my most favorite fucking street in Los Angeles. I've literally not hit a fucking red light. There's nothing funnier than a red light. Okay, now you step on the gas, you blow through the light. You make sure the guy behind you makes it, and he didn't, because he's lollygagging. But I'm thinking about him, see? I'm having empathy for other people. Here's another green light. Please turn left in 500 feet. Now, how can I turn left here? It says no left turn. Look at this thing, it wants to make an illegal turn here. Oh, I guess I can make a U-turn. Can I do it right here? We're gonna find out. All right, now what I just did there, you're not supposed to do that unless you look both ways and you don't see a cop. Jesus fucking Christ, this is ridiculous. I feel like I'm on Adam 12. It's like the population of LA in the 1960s. I feel like, like a plague hit LA and like everybody died, right, as we were putting these fucking cameras up. Look at this. Everybody just behaving themselves, staying in the correct lanes. I don't think we need to make any more of these videos. I think everybody's driving great now. I didn't realize there was desolate areas of greater Los Angeles. I, I feel like we found it. All right, I just made a right and a left lane. Satakoi. Wait, am I the problem? I think I'm the problem. Oh my goodness, look at dude, there's literally nobody on the fucking road. This is fucking hilarious. I've never had this driving experience ever in LA. This is like a feel good movie today. This, everything worked out. Did I just fuck that up? I think I did. I'm in the wrong goddamn lane. All right, now I'm gonna show you something you're not supposed to do. This is called the glide. You sort of sashay over. This is gonna be a fucking Boston move right here. <laughs> and here we go. And you can't get mad when somebody beeps at you when you do this. What you do is you just kind of, you just kind of, you just kind of do this. Like, hey, I'm just sort of mirroring your movements. And he didn't beep at me. All right, you see that? Kept a little distance. There's only arrows there pointing which way I was supposed to be going. I'm the worst. Well, I don't think we learned a lot today. 
other than what not to do the way I was driving. People, I don't pretend to know things. And shouldn't you be at work right now? Huh? Instead of sitting in your cubicle secretly watching these things. I don't even know what I did. I just literally went for like one of the most pleasurable fucking drives I've ever gone in LA. That was like a country road. And uh, I'm gonna take credit for that. I think everybody's listening. I think I'm changing lives with these videos. All right, well, thank you for watching. I hope it was educational. I hope it was entertaining. Have a nice day and God bless the United States of America. All right, I'm showing, this is the part of LA you're never gonna see. This is up north in the valley. Oh, another apartment building. Yeah, because we need more people. I'd love to be an old guy living in the valley someday, you know, just walking around with my striped shirt. Just talk to the other old biddies down there at the coffee shop. Drinking again and thinking of when, when you loved me. I'm having a few. I want a day drink. Roscoe Boulevard, okay. This fucking lunatic. Looking down at her goddamn phone. I wish it was a fucking sign of some shit. You know, I don't mind her because she's kind of aggressive. So they come up and they go to like bump into you. This guy looking at us like he's gonna get discovered. I swear to God, there's something about the valley that just makes you like two, three in the afternoon, you just wanna go into, into a bar. You know, you meet some guy that did a guest star on like emergency. I used to be on a show. Watch out, I was on chips. Get the fuck out of here. What was Eric Estrada like? Ah, he's a great guy. See, you know, that guy right over there, he should have made that fucking left and he didn't make it. Then he turns his direction on. That's a big LA thing. You wait till the light turns green and then you put your directional on. You leave that person right up against your bumper. This guy sells sandwiches and donuts. He's got a picture, you gotta pick a fucking... It's probably delicious, right? Look at that piece of shit. It's just these rundown strip malls and then it'll be like the greatest fucking donut you ever had. That was a nice U-turn that guy just made there. I like that one, you know? He did it, he got out of the way. Everything was fine. guy's having a fucking cookout right here. Dude, that is like next level homeless. Dude, the valley is the place to be homeless. Look, he's cleaning up after himself. Oh shit, the adult con. Why are we driving in the opposite direction of that? Dude, everybody watches porn, but can you imagine actually showing up to that fucking thing? I'm a really big fan of your work. <laughs> Just creeping him out. Oh my God, could you have enough security at that thing? Oh, fuck. See you know what I did there? I just stopped so this guy could cut the corner. You gotta look out for the trucks. That's another thing you gotta watch out for is all these assholes who cut in front of trucks when they, you know, they got all that weight behind them. They can't stop. What I love about the valley, look at all those signs out there. All these old school signs back when we thought we were gonna like colonize the moon and shit, you know? U.S. Fitness Mega Center. Old school movie theater. Dude, this is the shit. I bet there's some really good places to eat out here. And a fucking In-N-Out burger without a line. Wow. Oh, there's the line. That ain't bad. There's so no traffic, I'm doing a bunch of shit you shouldn't be doing. I'm looking at the drive through at fucking In-N-Out. How does Burger King survive this close to an In-N-Out? There's nobody in there. There's a whole bunch of nothing right fucking there. That when you get a kid, people buy it by a big fucking pink teddy bear. Jesus, you see that lady with the Terry Bradshaw shirt with the fishnets? Maybe she's some of the talent there at the Spearmint Rhino. Jesus, have you ever seen so many sun-damaged people in your life? You get fucking get out here, man. This is the desert. If I lived here, I would sweep up all of that fucking trash just to, for my own fucking well-being. Look at that, was that the original Walmart? Where the fuck are we? Dude, the valley's the shit. It's the place to be. I wonder what a house costs out here. 